again for the next tune in our series of old time fiddle standards. We just got finished doing Old Dan Tucker up to speed, and now we're going to slow it down, talk about the variations I do, and teach some of the bowings. Here's Old Dan Tucker played slowly. <laughs> thing we're going to do is something you might be familiar with if you've been watching this video series at all and that is we're going to enter the tune with this kind of purposefully sloppy sound by throwing our fingers down instead of a clean starting note which sounds kind of formal um, we're going to make it now when we do that we've used up a lot of our bow and that sets us up to start a shuffle bow, up and then down. A reminder, a shuffle bow goes And so we'll do that here. Now you may have noticed that the first phrase of this doesn't really naturally fit a shuffle bow. Um, the notes are all even, they're not uh, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So a reminder that a shuffle bow goes. And so one of the things we do in a tune like this is we use slurs to make the shuffle bow. So here. Now normally when you do a slur that crosses strings like this, that's a little awkward and we avoid it but in this case it's not awkward because we're not really playing two separate strings this whole time we're playing the a string and the d string together it's just a double stop so you don't have to move your bow from one string to the other all you have to do is move your fingers and let your bow stay in the same place This is a really good trick to know in any tune where you're playing notes that go back and forth between two adjacent strings, is that you can plant your bow between them and have your bow not follow your fingers, just stay evenly on the double stop. It's important.
important that we end that phrase on an up bow uh, because we're about to do a series of rock bows in the next phrase and a rock bow really has to begin on a down bow. So the next phrase is going to do something that we've worked on in previous videos where we go But in order to get there, we have to make sure that our down bow is where we're starting. And that's why that up bow shuffle at the end of the first phrase is so important. Now the transition between these phrases might be a little confusing. So let's go over just that part. After you've played the first phrase, Notice we're getting into the first phrase by ending on this. So you have this slur that goes on from the A to the B note. And then a down bow on the C sharp. So once we've gotten into that next phrase on our down bow by slurring the A and the B note, now we're set up to do a perfect down, up, down, up rock bow. And we can either do it in half time double time and make it sound more like a rock bow. The way we make it work into double time is we double up every note. So including the first one, we have to play this third finger D note twice. But like always, we don't do the rock bow evenly. We go. Notice our down bows are pulling harder than our up bows and they're taking up more time. And then we're ending on a two note up bow slur to make sure that our bow is all set up for the next phrase to start the downbeat on a down bow. Putting it all together. Also add in a little bit of a slide. Our first finger there is sliding into the F sharp. That's it for the first part. It's a very simple half-length tune. Um, the next part starts on this note. And you can either play that as a first finger with the open A. Or you can make a D chord out of it.
In either case, we're going to pulse the note. That means that we do a down bow on a double stop. We do an up bow on the lower of the two notes. And then we push back into the same double stop we started. It's really important that the double stop, both in volume and balance of the two notes, is the same when you return to it as when you start. Or if we're choosing to do a chord, As always, the timing of a pulse like that is really important. It's three distinct sounds. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. So there's no guesswork as to when it happens. And the other thing you want to avoid is overshooting your notes. In that case, I overshot in both directions. I went down too far so that my bow clipped the D string. And then I went too far over to the E string so that I ended on, an e, on the F sharp note by itself instead of the double stop. Now, why is that bad? Well, I mean, nothing's bad in music. You can play it however you want. But we have an effect that we're going for here. And the effect is this three sound. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Any other sounds that we put into that phrase dilute the effect of that. They muddy the waters. It just confuses the matter. So any other notes or other strings you hit, any other string transitions you have, if you go from a double stop back to a single note, all of these things confuse the very simple but powerful rhythmic statement we're making with that phrase. Ba, ba, ba. A lot of people ask, why can't we play that just as three bows? There's two reasons. One, this is a way for you to make three sounds in two bow strokes. So essentially you're speeding yourself up as you start to play. You, you'd rather be able to play three sounds in two bow strokes than having to use all three. Okay, But more importantly, it ends us in the wrong direction of our bow. So we want to start the next phrase on a down bow. But if we do it as three sounds with three bows, we just ended on a down bow, which means now our next phrase is going to be a rock bow in the wrong direction. And that's difficult to pull off. It's not the end of the world, but you'd rather not do it. But the pulse gives us an efficient syncopation and also ends our bow in the right direction. The next phrase returns to the F sharp, but starts another rock bow. Now many of the rock bows you encounter are these prolonged passages where you go back and forth. In this case, it's just a little fragment of a rock bow, but it still has to have the same feeling. There's a lot of complex things happening in this tiny phrase. So we have our initial pulse. We have our fragment of a rock bow. And now we have another pulse coming up where we change the notes in the pulse. first finger over to the E string just in time to catch the double stop. It 
if we put what we have together so far. This sets us up again on a nice down bow for a note that we can play one of three different ways. The melody note is an E. An E by itself sounds a little harsh and overly clean, so we're going to slide into it with our fourth finger. But you could also play the E in the open A. Or you could play the E in the C sharp. The first way, with the slide, we can do a slide with our fourth finger and then a pulse. The second way, with the open E and the open A, we can also do a pulse. And the final way, with the C sharp, in any event, once you're done with that, Stylistically, this is a phrase you should pay close attention to whenever you have a repeated note like this. If you're not familiar with old time fiddling or you're new to the genre or you're learning to control your bow, if you play that phrase too evenly, it can sound really robotic and stiff. want it to sound like that. What we want to hear is the rhythm that's going on there is a one, a two, a three, a four. It's not even an and. It's a tiny little a one, a two. We end with a pulse, which gives us the syncopated rhythm and also an up bow ending, and that finishes this part. One final thing to say is that as you start to put these phrases together, you're going to find potentially these awkward little spaces where you're waiting for the beat to come around, these pauses. There was one right there. We had this time where we didn't really know what to do with ourselves. The way to fix that is to come in early on the beat. Now when you're doing this, the note has to last longer. You're coming in on the and, but we're not trying to shorten the duration. So we have to have the note last its full amount of time plus the and. So it's going to feel like a long note, but it's going to fill in that gap. That was our awkward pause. There again, when I went to the E and C sharp double stop, I jumped the gun a bit, I came in on the and, and I filled the awkward space. Here, I'll leave the awkward spaces, and then I'll fill them in. Now to fill them in, you're going to see it sounds much more natural. Your bow doesn't ever have to lift the strings. It doesn't have to stop. So the two main places in the second part that we jumped the gun um, is, I'll, I'll point them out. Right there. And then the next spot is right there again. So you can tell that after the pulse points, we tend to come in early on the note on the and to fill in any awkward space. If we put that all together, first part and second part, we have.
Notice right at the end there, I did a little variation for the second phrase of the second part to make it sound a little different. The first time I went. And then the second time I added some notes, I went. And that about does it for Old Dan Tucker Slowed Down. If you want to support this endeavor, there are all kinds of ways to do that in the description of this video. And we'll see you next time for more old-time classic fiddle tunes played fast and then played slow.